Hello and welcome to episode number 300 of the Business of Story. I'm your host, Park Howell, and I thought I'd mark this special occasion with 10 surefire storytelling tips for sales that I began learning and applying over 35 years ago when I had absolutely no idea whatsoever as to what I was doing. But what I learned in those clueless formative years as a writer and producer of radio commercials with little to no direction from anyone has served me and my clients well for more than three decades. There's nothing like learning by doing. Like you, I was and am an intuitive storyteller. These radio spots came from my gut. There wasn't any forethought into any conceivable strategy and certainly no story frameworks. They're just the work of an active mind from a guy trying to make his way in the world of advertising by essentially winging it. You know that feeling? We all do it when we're starting out. But you can learn so much simply by doing. And that's what I learned. But the sales storytelling lessons I learned were invaluable. That's why I now coach sales and marketing leaders to evolve from intuitive to intentional brand and business storytellers using the three narrative frameworks I teach. That's why I want to share these 10 storytelling lessons I learned in my early years that are more powerful today than ever. It's worth noting that many of the production techniques to ignite the theater of the mind of my customers were inspired by my adolescent years sitting in front of what our dad called the boob tube, watching cartoons like Looney Tunes, Super Chicken, George of the Jungle, and Tom Slick. There was the fractured fairy tales, of course, Johnny Quest. And later in my years, I was listening to the fabulously sarcastic productions of Stan Freeberg, a legendary ad guy and comedy album writer-producer who got his start voicing many of the cartoons I loved. Stan Freeberg modestly presents the United States of America. The early years. So let's get started. Sales storytelling lesson number one. Sometimes you're given something to sell and your boss or client is quite specific on how they want it sold. But the sales premise is rather ridiculous. So what I've learned is that instead of pushing back, embrace their crazy and take it to the extreme with how you tell the story. For instance, back in 1988, one of my very first radio projects, and remember, no one ever taught me how to produce a radio commercial in my life. I was winging it. I was creating a spot for a cheap condominium project in Mesa, Arizona. The client was Coldwell Banker New Homes. And they had already settled on a theme for the grand opening. You know what it was? They wanted the Wizard of Oz, complete with a yellow brick road to draw people in. I went, huh? What in the hell does Oz have to do with condos in sleepy Mesa, Arizona? But I was stuck with this ridiculous creative concept. So I latched onto the visual of Dorothy's house flying through the tornado and needed to somehow bring that image to life by creating pictures with just audio. Instead of Dorothy, I start a couple piloting their home through the storm. This spot was by far my most ambitious production to date, and it taught me to take a nutty concept way over the top to make it work. Norm, is our house the church for flight? Relax, honey. This tornado can't hold us up here forever. And besides, look at the view from our front porch. You'd better enjoy it because I have a feeling it's not going to last. Whoa! Welcome. Where are we, Norm? Uh, I don't know. This sure doesn't look like Kansas. Oh, you're at Eastwood Park Condominiums in the heart of Mesa. 
And by the looks of your home, not a moment too soon. Eastwood Park, how beautiful. Mm. And affordable, too. Eastwood Park has luxurious one- and two-bedroom homes from just thirty-nine-five. That's thousands less than anything in the land. A magical investment. It's perfect, Norm. At thirty-nine-five, there is no place like Eastwood Park. <laughs> I'll get you my pretties and all your money, too. Who's Who's that? that? The competition. The grand opening was a huge success, and the client was particularly pleased that many of the guests actually mentioned the there's no place like home at Eastwood Park spot. That was the crazy name I gave the promotion. So Coldwell Banker gave us another project, this time an expensive condo project in North Phoenix on the Stone Creek Golf Course called The Springs at Paradise Valley, which leads to sales storytelling lesson number two. You have a great product to sell in a booming industry, but your client wants to play it safe. You know, play follow the leader, do what everybody else is doing. So you have to find the courage to say no. That's boring. You have to tell a sales story that zigs while everyone else is zagging. Here's the deal. In the early 1990s, Metropolitan Phoenix was lousy with developers and with even lousier commercials that all just kind of shouted at the listener to buy, 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 creating noise, noise, noise. So I thought, what would happen if we did a campy little spot that might stand out by being understated and a bit silly for a highbrow development. When I shared my script with the client, they actually thought I was making fun of their condos. The strategy I explained was to sound so completely different than the other developers shouting at the top of their radio lungs with something so calm and serene that you couldn't ignore it. Here's what got produced and led to their single best sales day for the Springs at Paradise Valley. Oh, give me a two or three bedroom home where all my golfing buddies can roam, where my game can be worked on all day. You sliced it, hon. Where an occasional bad shot occurs oh, no. and a discouraging word Four. where the tees are not crowded with play. Home, home at the Springs of Paradise Valley. Golf course living, plus a whole bunch of other great things. Gorgeous kitchen. Magnificently beautiful homes, priced incredibly low. So come and visit the springs at Paradise Valley today. Announcing a spectacular approach to living, the springs at Paradise Valley. It's country club living with golf, tennis, swimming, and more. Homes from only 1125, chock full of special touches like vaulted ceilings, gourmet kitchens, and private courtyards. It's close to business, shopping, and entertainment on Choya, just east of 40th Street between Cactus and Shea. So for a home with a view and a little golf too. Come on over and visit the springs at Paradise Valley today. That was my very first award-winning spot, and man, was I ever proud of it. Even the radio station reps were talking about its uniqueness. I was tickled. What it taught me is if you're going to be distinctive, you have to be different. Do the exact opposite of what everyone else is doing, even as scary as that is sometimes. I also learned that you got to stack the deck in your favor. In this case, I had casted a popular radio personality, and while listeners recognized his voice, most of them didn't know he played the guitar and could sing, too. It all provided a little character depth to the spot, which got additional play because of it. The simplicity of that spot worked so well, we tried another understated approach to the next Springs at Paradise Valley spot. The lesson here... For your sales storytelling is the old adage, less is more. at Paradise Valley, spectacular living from only 112.5 off 40th Street north of Shea. Boom, another record-breaking weekend of sales and another advertising award. You know, I felt like I was getting on a roll, even though I was still making this stuff up as I went. And you know what? Nobody was the wiser. I was totally winging it. 
Okay, so let's switch gears from housing developments to copiers. Back in the early 1990s, the fax machine was considered revolutionary technology and business. Copiers and electronic typewriters were still costly, but essential tools. And most of the copiers were big, clunky things that jammed and broke down all the time. So when the local legendary office products company of Hughes Callahan wanted to promote a sale, I thought listeners would appreciate an advertiser who actually understood what they were dealing with daily in their copy rooms. I even recruited my darling wife, Michelle, to play the young assistant to Miss Coolidge. We were rather tight on this particular production budget. Take a listen. The copier's ready, Mrs. Coolidge. Protective eyewear in place? Check. Fire retardant pressurized? Check. Okay, copy. Clear! Need a reliable copier or typewriter that you can afford? Careful, she might throw a belt. During Hughes Callahan's fourth annual warehouse sale, this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday only, you can save more than 90% on quality rental return copiers and electronic typewriters. More toner! That's right. Top-of-the-line 3M copiers from only $195. IBM and Brother typewriters from only $199. All maintained by Hughes Callahan and most with parts and labor warranties. Ready for page two? The sales storytelling lesson I learned here is the power of empathy and the importance of communicating that you truly understand the problem your customer is facing and that you are prepared to solve for them. But how do you tell that story? Well, you live it with them. That sales storytelling lesson number four that worked its magic. Again, customers showed up commenting on the radio spot. The annoying mayhem of sound effects worked its magic to make their frustration as visceral as possible, especially as they listened on their car radios creeping along in rush hour traffic. Creatively, this spot underscored to me the power of ambient audio to light up the theater of the mind. But it's a fine line. It's easy to take it too far and make your story a mush of sound. Confusion. I was lucky to work with a brilliant audio engineer by the name of Tim Honeycutt of Honeycutt Studios here in Phoenix, who knew when to rein me in or push me out of my comfort zone. I was also lucky to work with a guy by the name of Sandy Peterson, who pretty much let me do whatever I wanted with our creative radio. Sandy owned the agency, Peterson Communications. You also have to remember that we were recording and producing everything in analog. There was no digital anything at the time. We used reel-to-reel -reel magnetic tape. The process is called open reel recording. Tim would record on a 16-track deck, one pass at a time. First, we'd record the voices, sometimes together and sometimes separately. Then a music track was recorded, and finally, we added scores of sound effects. Then he'd mix it all together. Edits were made by literally cutting the tape with an old-fashioned razor blade. Tim would place his palms on the left and right tape reels, scrubbing the tape back and forth over the playhead like an EDM DJ does today, until he found the precise edit point. And then he'd slash the tape with his razor. When we removed or relocated a recorded section of tape, he'd slice it on both ends and drape it over the back of his neck. Sometimes he'd end up with, I don't know, four or five of these tiny little audio scars, and he would remember each section simply by their individual lengths. Then he'd use a little piece of white tape to connect the various edits together. What you ended up with was like this 100 foot long run of audio tape for each 60 second spot that looked like a long scar bandaged together. I still vividly recall what a Frankenstein tape job was required for this next spot. Let me set the scene with sales storytelling lesson number five. Say you have an important sales story to tell, but you're creatively stymied on how to tell it. Everything you come up with seems kind of meh. I recommend the old proven technique of borrowed interest. If you're not familiar with the term, borrowed interest is the intentional association of an unrelated theme, event, or image with a product, service, or subject 
being presented to attract attention otherwise not anticipated. So really what you're doing is bringing two different worlds together to make a third more powerful construct or world. For instance, if you were going to make a Coen Brothers movie about Arizona roofing contractors, you would absolutely cast our client Warren Hess, owner of Robinette Roofing. Warren came off like a guy who would make a tin sighting salesman look like a Red Cross worker. Although he had that air about him, he was a stand-up businessman. He sold a solid roofing product, and unlike his competition, he stood behind his 15-year warranties. But what I loved most about Warren was that he was willing to have fun and take risks with his advertising. This is where I leveraged the idea of borrowed interest. The first spot of many we created for Warren was inspired by Alfred Hitchcock's suspense thriller called Dial M for Murder. Maybe you've seen it. When Michelle and I were raising our young family, we had zero money. I think I was making like 26,000 bucks a year. So I would check out VHS movies from the Phoenix Public Library for our Friday night entertainment, and Hitchcock flicks were some of our absolute favorites. As I was struggling to find a creative concept for Robinette Roofing's first radio commercial, we watched Dial M for Murder. Ah, it occurred to me that I could borrow the plot and create a spot called Dial M for Monsoons. Because in Arizona, we get these crazy monsoon storms during the summer that just deluge us with rain. And that's when the roofs really leak, of course. So that's exactly what I did. Here's Margot being tormented by her husband, Tony, because of their leaky roof. Tonight, Robinette Roofing stars in the dripping suspense of Dial M for Monsoon. Help me! Margot? Tony, our roof's leaking again! A conniving husband drives his wife mad with a leaking roof. Darling, I just checked the roof. In my golf shoes. But Tony! No, calm down, dear. Last time it rained, the flood barely cleared the windowsill. I can't stand it anymore! Will Margot discover the complete carpenter foam and coating system at Robinette Roofing? Hmm? Robinette, offering 15 years of protection. Stay out of this, you silly announcer. 15 years of protection? Guaranteed! That's it, Tony. I'm calling Robinette. Don't! You're in no shape for their free inspection and estimate. Can Robinette offer Margot the protection she so desperately needs? Why, yes, I think they can. See for yourself. Dial 443-1666. That's 443-1666. Robinette has been covering Arizona since 1974. Darling, I'll get some grill bits, some spikes. We can fix ourselves. Oh, go soak your head for a change. The tongue-in-cheek nature of that spot mirrored Warren's personality, and he loved it. This was the first time that I tried some meta, self-referential humor by having Tony respond to the announcer in the spot. It was a way to break that third wall with the listeners and let them know we weren't taking ourselves too seriously here. It's just a radio commercial for a roofing contractor, after all. I wanted them in on the joke to build credibility and, more importantly, to invite them into the sales story. Warren let us push the boundaries even further, which helped make Robinette Roofing the fastest-growing roofing contractor in Arizona. And I might mention, on three occasions, we were being so disruptive that the radio stations actually asked us to pull some of our Robinette Roofing spots. But we never did. You'll see, or hear, why in just a minute. So try some borrowed interest in your sales storytelling and see where it takes you. All right, let's move on to number six. And here, I'm going to have to take you out to the ballpark. Before Phoenix got the Arizona Diamondbacks professional baseball team in 1998, we had, as a client, the AAA affiliate to the San Francisco Giants called the Phoenix Firebirds. I handled the Firebirds account working with their terrific general manager by the name of Craig Platenic. We still laugh at some of the promotional stuff we got to pull off. And while they didn't have much money and most of our fees were in trade for tickets, sweating it out on a July summer evening at the ballpark, our kids had a blast. Now, here's a spot we created that unabashedly plays on the nostalgia of America's pastime. And that's sales storytelling tip number six. Use nostalgia in your storytelling because when done well, it transports your prospect back to the good old days when everything seemed better. 
We used nostalgia to announce that the Firebirds would be opening their season in the brand new Scottsdale Stadium, where they would play the remainder of their games until the Diamondbacks arrived. So let me take you out to the ball game. Take me out to the ball game. Isn't there anything on TV? Take me out to the crowd. Uh, maybe tomorrow. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. There's some stuff I should be doing. I don't care if I ever get back. Let Honey. me root, root, root for the home team. Actually, a game might be fun. If they don't win, it's a shame. Where's your mother? For it's one. Grab your glove. Two, Let's go. Three strikes, you're out to at the, the old ball game. game. Spend some quality time with your kids celebrating America's greatest pastime, Firebirds Baseball. Their inaugural season in that new Scottsdale Stadium starts this Thursday night against the Tacoma Tigers. And the first 4,000 fans get free commemorative posters. You want Firebirds tickets? Call 275-0500. Hey, a family of four only costs 14 bucks, so go to a ball game. Firebirds Baseball at Scottsdale Stadium. A giant new tradition. This spot features another popular broadcast personality and all-around great guy, Marty Manning, and his son. Pardon the pun, but the spot was such a hit that other AAA franchises around the country licensed the creative of this story from us to use in their very own advertising and promotions. That's when it occurred to me that if the creative is solid and the storytelling is totally dialed in, a guy might actually be able to license it out to several different clients. We use this licensing concept when we launched the Water Use It Wisely conservation campaign in Arizona in 1998. It grew to be the largest water conservation outreach effort of its kind in North America in the early 2000s, when more than 400 private and public entities licensed the creative campaign for their own uses. That's the power of a compelling sales story. It simply scales. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's dial back to the early 90s with a client that I actually got to use my music chops with, Alan Piano and Organ. Now, as you may know, if you've been a listener of mine, you probably have heard me say many times that I got two degrees from Wazoo, one in communications, but one in music composition and theory, figuring I would never make a living as a composer. I would just use those skills in the communications world, and they have been invaluable to me for the composition and theory of storytelling. Because of my background in music, my boss, Sandy, gave me the Allen Piano and Organ account. They were the local Steinway dealer, and I inherited its stylish and fairly conservative owner, Lamar Roach. It took Lamar some time to warm up to my storytelling antics. Most of the first spots we produced were pretty pedestrian. You know, like 20% off a of used Steinway, or buy an upright and we'll throw in a month's worth of free piano lessons, blah, 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 blah. I felt like the creative his refined sensibilities wanted was more like a funeral dirge than Mozart's Turkish march. One day, Lamar called me in and wanted to know why his radio spots weren't working. I was honest with him, and I said, because they're boring. Boring is a fifth grader clunking through fur a lease on a Kimball spinet in the basement of a piano teacher's Christmas recital, or something like that. Well, isn't that your fault, he asked. And I said, yes, it is. I should have never let you run those boring spots in the first place. My bad. I was weak. Then Lamar says, well, we've just been contracted to sell all of the practice pianos in the Grand Canyon College Music Department, and we're going to replace them with new ones. Got any ideas how to sell them, he asked. Guess what? This leads to sales storytelling concept number seven. Pull the story from your very own experience that connects you to your customer. Use your past to inspire your sales story. You see, it was like I knew immediately what we had to do with the radio spot. As soon as he said practice piano, it took me back to the many hours and pimples on my ass I got sitting isolated at the piano in the practice room at Wazoo getting my music degree. Over those four years, a guy grows attached to his practice piano. 
in a particular practice room because that piano becomes like a close friend sheltering in place with you. You know the feeling? So I asked Lamar to let me share that experience in a spot while I promised to get across all of his sales points. So let me take you to a moment in that confined practice room in Widenhour Hall at Grand Canyon College. I even get to play the piano in this spot with a song I wrote back at Wazoo that actually sets the stage for this story. That's a beautiful piano. Thank you. You must be a music student. You play with such emotion. It's just that I'm going to miss this wonderful Kauai piano. During summer break, huh? No. You see, every Kauai grand and vertical piano at Grand Canyon College is being sold, and we've only had them a year. Oh, my. New Kauais are coming this fall. Uh, But this piano looks new. I know. She's my favorite. Seen me through treacherous Bach fugues, the best of Beethoven, even a Manilow ballad for my brother's wedding. How awful. And all for what? To be sold at a fraction of what she's worth? No, I won't have it. I'll barricade myself in this practice room. I'll commandeer Widenauer Hall. She's wait, mine. Wait, mine. Wait, 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 wait. If all these kawaii pianos are priced so low, why don't you just buy it? Oh, I could do that. I like the spot overall, but the ending turned out to be a bit too pianissimo or soft for my liking. So I pulled an old trick from George of the Jungle and added a timpani hit to punctuate the I could do that punchline. When Lamar heard the spot, he just rolled his eyes with the disdain of a classically trained musician. I figured I was probably fired. But we ran the dang thing anyway. And guess what happened? We sold 80% of those used kawaii pianos that week. The lesson here is proof that the old saying of write what you know really works, especially in your sales storytelling. So Lamar gave me another creative challenge. Allen Piano in Oregon was rolling out the very first digital pianos. They just didn't really exist for the basic consumer at this point. And even Lamar was a little leery about advanced electronics replacing good old fashioned felted hammers and strings on pianos. So I thought a fun 60-second demo to take the listener on a quick musical journey with the latest technology was in order. Which leads me to sales storytelling technique number eight. Sales demos are powerful when done right, but exceedingly boring when not. Therefore, get creative in your storytelling by making the familiar demo novel. Imagine how much fun Bach would have had with a Kawhi digital piano. Or Mozart, he would have been silly over it. You see, Kawhi has expanded man's creativity with its new digital pianos, available at Allen Piano. Now enjoy the sound and touch of a concert grand. With nine other instruments at your fingertips, like an electric piano. A full church organ. or even vibes to play around with. And Kawaii Digital Pianos are priced surprisingly less than a standard piano from only $13.95. And that includes headphones for privacy and computer plugins for even more musical variety. So now, when the musical genius in your family sits down to Haydn, they can add a personal touch. The Kawaii Digital Piano, simply changing the history of music. In listening to it after all these years, I still crack up over the sound of that analog button being pushed to command the digital instrument. Two worlds colliding, I suppose. Do you recall the Aesop and Son cartoons created by Jay Ward? He'd take a famous Aesop fable and turn them into humorous cartoons that, of course, always delivered a universal moral. So let's bring back into the story our good friend Warren Hess of Robinette Roofing to help me make my sales storytelling point number nine. And here it is. When you're selling, the most important thing you can do is to connect the beliefs and values you share with your audience, your customer. But how do you effectively do that? Well by playing off of the universal truths found in stories like Aesop Fables. The anecdotes are excellent guides when crafting your sales stories, and then you can just make them your own. 
So here's how I tried it. Warren needed to do a franchise spot for one of his suppliers, JM Weather Barrier. I told him I wanted to take a fable approach to selling a roof, and he laughed saying, whatever. That led to this, which I affectionately called Doggone Roof. Once upon a time, there was a homeowner who loved to procrastinate. I wonder if my roof still leaks. Oh, I'll check it tomorrow. He was loved by all, but depended on by few. My faithful dog, Bruno. You look hungry. <clears throat> I'll feed you tomorrow. But for Peter Procrastinator, tomorrow never came. And soon, neither did Bruno. Here, yeah, Bruno. Bruno? He'd run off to seek a more dependable shelter. Why do I miss Bruno? Then the rains hit. And like his dog, his neglected flat roof ran off all over his living room. This just can't wait. He'd heard about J.M. Weather Barrier, Arizona's roofing specialist, and gave them a call at 265-ROOF. Let me see, that's 265-ROOF. Soon, J.M. Weather Barrier arrived with a free inspection and estimate, and then applied the finest foam and elastomeric coating systems from Carpenter. Boy, if Bruno could see this. Now Peter doesn't worry about tomorrow because because his roof is protected for at least 10 years, guaranteed. Even Bruno returned. Bruno, here, have a T-bone. The moral of the story is call JM Weather Barrier at 265 Roof for a free inspection today, or you'll be <clears throat> doggone sorry tomorrow. When I finished producing the spot, I was pretty proud of it. And then I had to run it over to Warren's office where this surly sales guy from JM Weather Barrier was waiting to hear it before it aired. As it played for my little beat-up cassette recorder, the dude literally devolved from a frown to an outright scowl. When it was done, he shot a stare at Warren and said, that's no way to sell a fricking roof. He didn't use fricking. But to his credit, he said, what the hell, Warren? It's your money. Go with it. Let me tell you, that silly little spot sold more JM Weather Barrier roofs in one month than they had ever experienced. What I learned with this commercial was that unusual storytelling connected to a surprising product, Fable plus roofing contractor, hacked through the noise and hooked the hearts of their customers. I mean, who would ever expect a roofing contractor to, to deliver a powerful moral that connected with listeners? Ah, such great fun. The success of that spot led to my greatest challenge, overcoming writer's block with a sales story. It also led to the first radio commercial that we were asked to pull off the air, and Warren loved it. This is when I learned sales storytelling tip number 10. When you have to craft a compelling sales story, but you're creatively spent, you got bupkis, here's what you do. You go to the extreme, push the boundaries, and just see what happens. I was struggling to find a concept, and it was a last-minute aha that hit me. And I know it's going to sound a little corny, maybe like some of my spots do, but it literally hit me in the shower. I thought, what if we visited a clocksmith repairing a water-damaged clock for a customer with a leaky roof following an Arizona monsoon? I think it might sound something like this. Can you guess why some listeners called and complained? I've never seen it rain so hard in my life. I know what you mean. Hey, that... That storm just about drowned us. We had water coming through the ceiling. I mean, we were soaked to the bone. Me too. Hey, there is no way in I'm going through that again. I called Robinette Roofing. Oh? Best roofing company around. The best, huh? Yes. Robinette came out, took a look at my roof for free, and recommended the complete Carpenter roofing system. Carpenter? Yep. Best roofing system around, especially for flat roofs, because it insulates and keeps that rain out, and Ben, it's guaranteed for 15... Years. Fifteen years? Yep. Glad I called Robinette Roofing. You know, Ben, you ought to call him. Robinette's been covering Arizona since 1974. That's a darn long time. Great idea. There you go. Clock's good as new. Uh, just keep her out of the rain from now on. God bless Warren Hess. Now to be clear, I wasn't out to offend anyone. My job was to get noticed by using familiar radio techniques but in novel ways. Familiar storytelling, but in novel ways. Sometime you have to straddle the line, and in this day of uber political correctness and the age of rage, it's more difficult than ever to straddle that line. In fact, I've got a couple spots that just plain would not work today. So I haven't included them in the show. But they were sure fun back when people took things a little less seriously. So those are my top 10 sales storytelling tips. Maybe not profound, 
but profoundly powerful. And you may be asking yourself, well, Park, I'm not producing radio commercials or TV commercials. How does this relate to me? The point here is you are a sales storyteller, and it is your job as such to light up the theater of the mind of your customers so that they can picture your offering, they can feel your offering, that you become memorable. I'm just fortunate to have this work, this portfolio of radio spots that I can share different ways to do this. Now, just take the radio out of it and think about how you can tell these stories to light up the theater of the mind with your words for that prospect sitting across from you. So let's do a quick review of the 10 sales storytelling tips that I learned early in my career by doing. Was never taught, just saw and heard how they played out. Tip number one. When presented with a crazy sales concept, take it to the extreme. Two, never, ever, ever play it safe. Three, less is more in your sales storytelling. Four, empathy is everything. Share sales stories that really let your audience understand your prospects know that you understand and empathize where they are on their journey and you can help them get what they want out of life. But you can only do that if you have done your homework and you have super authentic empathy for them. Sales storytelling tip number five, use borrowed interest to connect your sales concept to a bigger idea. It's so much fun and it can be so creative in the process. Number six, leverage nostalgia to connect your customer to a better time that you can actually make happen in their life now. Number seven, tell stories based on your own experience to connect with your customer's experience. That way they say, whoa, you're just like me. Sales storytelling number eight, create novel product demos to make the familiar surprising. Number nine, use story morals to connect your shared beliefs and values with your customers. And sales storytelling tip number 10. When you are creatively stuck with your sales story, then go to the extreme. Get out of your head. Go way the heck out there. So far so that it scares the hell out of you. And see what surprising insights materialize. Okay, now on to the bonus round. I'll share sales storytelling tip number 11 after this spot. So let's take a trip to Boulder Ridge, a new community of manufactured homes for active seniors, 55 plus. Back in the day, I couldn't imagine living in such a place, but now I'm old enough to get in. Whew. Boulder Ridge was hosting a 4th of July open house aptly titled Yankee Doodle Dandy Days. That's right, you heard me. It makes you think of James Cohen's patriotic tune, Yankee Doodle Dandy. Well, at least it did for me, and it certainly connected with their aging audience. Many years earlier, my mom and dad took me and my two younger brothers, Mike and Chris, to the Fifth Avenue Theater in downtown Seattle to see the musical Yankee Doodle Dandy, starring David Cassidy the singer-actor who gained fame as the heartthrob eldest brother in the popular TV series, The Partridge Family, about a singing family. It was the first time I had ever experienced a Broadway musical. We had great seats up front, and I was totally blown away by the production, the songs, the staging, everything that went into that performance. It was one of those major turning points you experience in life that helps direct what you want to do when you grow up. I thought being a movie or music producer would be super cool, and I still do, actually. But instead, I've combined my creativity and commerce in the advertising field, and now, of course, the field of brand and business and sales storytelling. However, Yankee Doodle Dandy Days let me channel George Cohen and Stan Freeberg, too. I wondered if I could pull off a Freeberg-esque production in a 60-second spot. I wrote the lyrics, arranged the score, and we recorded it live with a band, adding the announcer and tap dancing later. I'm not sure I completely pulled it off, but I've mustered the courage to share it with you now, complete with opening timpani roll, a Freeberg trademark. 
And now for Boulder Ridge, Arizona's finest community for fabulous folks 55 and older, Gladys Gatwall! It's time for Yankee Doodle Candy Days. Time to visit Boulder Ridge. Sell it, Gladys! It's an adult community of manufactured homes with an open house Sunday, March 12th. Celebrate great living at Boulder Ridge, and you can win a trip for two on American Airlines. Daddy, where's the continental U.S.? That's right, Gladys, plus other wonderful prizes. Enjoy all American hot dogs, Carl's Jr. hamburgers, and lemonade. Now we're cooking. So live it up with an Americana extravaganza this Sunday from noon to five at Boulder Ridge. We are off of Cave Creek Road, north of Bell and Little Way. Join us for Yankee Doodle. Boulder Ridge is Yankee Doodle. That's all we're Yankee Doodle. Don't push it, Gladys. Yay. I know, it's kind of nuts. I hear you. Especially given today's more subdued communication style. Everyone's so doggone serious. But what I've learned is more times than not, you just have to go for it. So sales storytelling tip number 11 is stop taking yourself so damn seriously. Let your hair down. Be yourself. Be vulnerable, authentic, and all of the other buzzwords to create buzz about your product or service. Relax and have some fun for crying out loud. All right, folks, I've got three Robinette roofing spots left for you. And they're important because they demonstrate three different production techniques that I have found to be extremely effective in all forms of storytelling. The first technique is to make your concept as niche, timely, and relevant as possible in, you know, sort of a guerrilla marketing sort of way. Meaning, can you make your message play off of a current event? or take advantage of something or someone who is top of mind with your audience and isn't currently connected to your brand or your business, your product or service. For instance, at the time in Phoenix, Robinette's chief competitor was Universal Roofing. Their advertising was pretty much based on one man, Pat McMahon. Pat McMahon to this day is a broadcast icon in Arizona. Years back, he played several characters in the Wallace and Ladmo TV show, the longest-running kid series in the history of TV. At the time of this spot, McMahon had the number one show on radio as host of KTAR's morning program. He had this very folksy delivery and a cutting wit that was hard to beat. His promotional reads exuded trust in the advertisers that he promoted. He was like, you know, the Pope of popular radio, and his sponsors knew it. Universal Roofing counted on his live on-air character, and those spots were working, making Universal the top roofer in Arizona. Of course, Warren didn't like that so much. So he said, what are you going to do about it, Park? Love a challenge. That's when I cooked up the idea of creating this fictional radio personality to thwart Pat McMahon's, named Les McMore and produced a spot of McMore getting all of his different sponsor reads mixed up. And here's the best part. We only ran the commercial on Pat McMahon's morning show. Give it a listen, and then I'll explain what happened next. Hello, this is Les McMore. You know what my lovely wife Vivian, who by the way looks smashing in evening wear from Lady Carol's on Camelback and I did this weekend? Well, we went to Mary Burt's famous steakhouse for a big juicy roof. Now it, hold it. Now, this is supposed to be a testimonial for uh, intergalactic roofing. I'm getting a free roof out of the deal. Ah, here it is. Vivian and I fixed our roof with XYZ security because, no, uh, intergalactic roofing, right, applies only the finest USDA prime beef to your roof, protecting you from burglars. Uh, Paid endorsements are a dime a dozen. However, if you want guaranteed protection with any type of roof, call Robinette Roofing at 252-7474. And for real testimonials, talk to homeowners who truly rely on the complete protection of a Robinette roof. Then call Robinette for your free inspection and estimate, 252-7474. So for the roofer Vivian and I think of first, call XYZ's famous uh, Lady Carol, uh, member FDIC. Well, after that first morning of running the spot, Sandy Peterson, my boss, got a call from KTAR station manager demanding that we pull the spot. Sandy, much to his credit, said, Jim, do you really want us to pull that spot? I mean, 
What if the Arizona Republic newspaper got wind that you were censoring our advertising on your highest rated talk show because Pat McMahon was offended? Jim relented, Warren was tickled, and Robinette gained sales ground on Universal Roofing. The funny thing here is many years later, I ran into Pat McMahon and I asked him if he remembered the Les McMore spot promoting intergalactic roofing on his show. He said, uh, yeah, in fact, I do. Was that you? Did you create that? I said, yeah, I sure did. And what did you think of it? He goes, I loved it. The strategy was spot on and old Les McMore was funny as hell. Ah, the Irish. Gotta love them. Our storytelling led to Robinette growing, and they wanted to create a spot to let their customers know about their success. But instead of typical chest pounding, we wanted our prospects to actually picture Robinette's success in the theater of their mind. So we invited them to experience it. It's a major move for us, buying a new place like this, but it's well worth it getting bigger and better. And we're proud to say it's because thousands of Arizona families rely on us through rain or shine. Of course, you can still reach us at our old number or call our new one at 581-8100. That's 581-8100. But don't be surprised if you hear from us first, just to see how you're doing. After all, that's why we've been a trusted name since 1974. That's right, we're Robinette Roofing the people who bring you 15 years of leak-proof protection, guaranteed. Now, production will go here, accounting will be over there, and customer service, our backbone, will be all in through here. This beautiful new facility was made possible by you, Arizona, and from everyone at Robinette Roofing, we'd like to say thank you. Now, if I could only find the light switch. In this spot, we wanted to transport listeners to Robinette's new headquarters. And listening to it now and a better set up the light switch gag at the end, I might have had him kicked over a wastebasket or step on a cat or something. But I think the audio captures the expanse of their new place, which metaphorically communicates the growth of Robinette. Did you feel like you were walking right alongside of him? That was my goal. Okay, here's my final example of storytelling to captivate the theater of the mind. And this may well be my favorite, but it wasn't a hit with some of the Irish Catholics in Phoenix. So Ma says, Michael, paint the nice father's ceiling. I figure Navajo white. The man wants a fresco? So here I am, flat on my back, five stories up in the Sistine Chapel, and the roof leaks. Hey, Michael, what's the matter you? Father, ever hear of Robinette Roofing? A Robinette to who? Robinette Roofing. They got a foam and coat and roof system that's guaranteed to fix this old leaky church. I don't know. I get a lot of roofers in my confessional. But Padre, Robinette's roof will insulate and protect you for at least 15 years. 15 years? Guaranteed. A trusted name since 74. Give them a call for free inspection and estimate. Got that number, Mr. Wise Guy? 443-1666. That's 443-1666. Peace of mind, Father. That's what Robin at Roofing offers. All right, already. You don't have to preach. <laughs> Look who's talking. <laughs> That's one of my all-time favorites. Now, I honestly didn't mean to offend anyone with the Michelangelo spot. I mean, I was raised Catholic myself. And I even threw the industry under the bus a bit when the priest says, I don't know, Michael, I get a lot of roofers in my confessional. But once again, we had calls to stop airing the spot, which means it was working. And by now, you know what Warren's response was. Keep running it. Well, there you have it. A trip down memory lane for me and maybe a better understanding for you as to why I find storytelling the most powerful yet underutilized asset in business and sales today. Thanks for listening to this, my 300th episode. And for those of you that have been along with me for almost six years, thank you so much for being an active listener of the Business of Story. If you liked what you heard here, and again, I want to underscore, I'm just using radio here as an example of how to light up the theater of the mind. This is exactly what you want to do with all of your oral storytelling. 
Take your audience to a place, a point in time. Share with them a moment that everything changed. Get them to feel it. Get them to experience. And then paint the picture of what tomorrow can look like. Let them imagine a brighter future working with you and the product or service that you have to offer. I hope you'll take these 10 tips plus the bonus round and apply them in your storytelling today. And by all means, if you and your sales team can use this, share it with them or invite me in. And I would love to come and work with you on either a business of story masterclass for your sales team or a mastery course where I will teach them the three proven narrative frameworks that help you excel through the stories you tell. And oh, by the way, these are frameworks that have grown companies by as much as 600%. So if I can help you, track me down over at thebusinessofstory.com. Shoot me a note at park at businessofstory.com. You can check out my new book, Brand Be Witchery, which you can get on Amazon or Apple Books. And even though it has branding in the name, it is very much of a sales tool for you and your group. And until next week, show number 301, when we will have another international storytelling artist here for you to help you craft and tell compelling stories that sell. Remember that the most potent story you will ever tell is the story you tell yourself. So make it a great one. Story on, my friend. Mm -hmm.